In today's class, I'm going to be talking about the basic components of a computer and the peripherals or attachments and devices like printers and things that go along with that and how they interact. Now, I know this might sound like some really elementary things to some people, but a lot of people don't understand how components of a computer interconnect and communicate to one another and I think that's a very important part of understanding how your computer works. Way back in 1983 when I got my first computer it was a Commodore VIC-20 and I had just a couple of devices hooked to it and had some classes in school and it was very basic to understand how they worked and um, you know how they interacted with one another and it was very important to do that. Today it's still you know, you still have to have those fundamentals. I'm a firm believer of that. So I'm going to go back, teach the very basics, and hopefully this will help some of you out. So when you have your computer, uh, you have your CPU, or the central processing unit. And that box contains your processor, the memory, the hard drive. Way back then we didn't have hard drives, but um, that box, if it's a desktop computer, typically you have the, the box. A lot of people call that the hard drive, but the hard drive is actually a little device inside. Yeah, but this is called the CPU, and attached to that CPU will be your monitor, and a keyboard, and a mouse. So here's your keyboard and here's your mouse. And the way these interact in a general sense is the CPU does what's called I.O. input output. And devices can be input, they can be output, or they can be input output, they can be both. So a monitor, generally speaking, is an output device because the signal goes from the CPU to the monitor to be displayed on the screen so you can see it. Now, in, and I'll go back and explain some of this, uh, how that compares to today in a few minutes. The keyboard is generally an input device because it sends signals into the computer, into the CPU, and for processing. The mouse is also generally an input device. It sends information into the computer so that it knows the X, Y coordinates of where to put the cursor on the screen as you move it around. Then we get into some of the other devices, such as a printer. The printer is generally an output device. You create information, you print it, and it sends the information out to the printer. Now, back way back in the day, we had the devices that we had to hook to the computers to be able to store information. So if you've been around for a while, you probably remember these little uh, floppy disks. These are three and a half inch floppy disks, or maybe even these real old ones, these big five and a quarter inch floppy disks. So those have been around for a while. And you would have to hook a disk drive to the computer and the disk drive was an input and an output device. It could send information and load it into the CPU, or you could use the CPU to send information to disks for storage, for long-term storage. Because any information that's in your CPU itself, that's not on a hard drive, when you're using it, for example, things you're using in Windows, and use this analogy, if you have Microsoft Word open, and you haven't saved your document, and you turn off your CPU, you lose whatever you're working on. So, um, you know, that's used for your storage. Now, today, some of these devices work a little bit differently because of advancements in technology. A uh, printer is generally an output device. However, nowadays you have printers that also fax, they copy, and they scan. So, there is a lot of times what's called bi-directional communication where it can be an input-output device because if you're scanning something, you're sending that information into the CPU from the scanner. That may be also a part of your printer, or it could be a separate scanner. The monitor sometimes can be a bi-directional device, too, because a lot of times they'll have USB ports on them and card readers. My monitor has a card, has all, all the different types of card readers right on the side of it, right here, as a matter of fact. So my monitor, in a sense, is an input-output output device. And a lot of times, 
devices like your monitors these days have that bi-directional communication for plug and play access as well. So when you hook a monitor up to your computer, it tries and usually it does detect the monitor as well as the optimal resolution and things like that that it can uh, run the display at for you know best viewing purposes. It used to be that you know back in you know early days of Windows XP or something like that, you used to have to put in a driver disk to get your monitor display properly. But usually don't have to do that anymore with Windows 7, Windows 8, and, and Windows 10 coming that usually auto detects. And if it needs a driver, a lot of times it just goes online and downloads it and all that. So um, all these basic components, uh, just wanted to explain, these are input-output devices. And like I said, these are fundamentals that you need to understand about your computer and how the components interact with one another so that you can um, you know, better support yourself and be able to, you know, even work on them, change devices out, test things and all that. So a lot of time, you know, nowadays your printers usually connect with a USB cable. Most, you know, a lot of new printers you buy are wireless now, but they still communicate in either uh, output, input, or I.O. Uh, mode and sending information back and forth to the CPU. So, now, with, I'm going to break the CPU down a little bit further. And the CPU has what's called a motherboard or a main board. And that is where your chips generally lie that are on your computer, such as the actual CPU or the processor. So if you have an Intel or an AMD processor, and there are some other manufacturers out there as well, uh, but those are the two big ones. That, that chip is going to be on your motherboard. It's also going to have slots for the RAM. Sometimes there's two or four or six slots for memory. And then everything else is generally going to connect to this board and run off of it. So you're going to have connections for your monitor, connections for any kind of other devices such as your printers, uh, your USB ports, that allow you to connect to printers. And all of that generally runs from this system board. So uh, understanding uh, another one is going to be your hard drive, where all your storage is. And your hard drive should not be confused with your RAM. A lot of people ask me, they say, well, I've got a lot of stuff stored on my computer, and I think it's making it slow. Well, storing things on your computer, like files, like downloaded files, Word documents, things like that, that does not generally slow your computer down because it's just storage. Okay, So think of it this way. If you have a file cabinet, and you have put files in that file cabinet, does it slow you down? No. It's just a place to put your stuff. So it just sits there. However, with RAM, Think of that as your memory in your head. When you remember something, you're pulling that from RAM. Okay, That's what's there. And when you go to sleep, your memory kind of shuts down for the most part, except for your dreams. But um, your RAM is where it runs everything. So when you boot your computer up, you turn it on, Windows loads up. Sometimes it takes you know, five minutes or so. I always call that the cup of coffee time because it's best to log on to your computer and go get a cup of coffee. And by the time you get back, it's, it's usually up and running. And so Everything that's running when you're using any of your programs is running in RAM. And if you shut your computer off, it just kind of dies and goes away, unless you've stored things on your hard drive or your C drive in most cases. That's what, what it's referred to. And so um, when you, uh, uh, you know, are talking about your computer or looking at a new computer, and you'll see that it has 500 gigabytes and people say, well, it must be fast because it's 500 gigabytes. Well, it doesn't matter. That's just storage. However, if it has 8 gigabytes of RAM, then that's good. That is how much working memory that it has. Whether this hard drive is 500 meg uh, gigabytes or if it's 2 terabytes, in a general sense, that doesn't affect the speed of the computer. One exception to that, because somebody will probably comment and say it does, is that two terabyte hard drives are usually going to be a little bit faster than a 500 gigabyte hard drive. But uh, for the sake of uh, understanding how the computer works, uh, that's not going to affect anything. 
So uh, hopefully that helped you understand a little bit more about how the basics of your computer and the components work and interact together. Um, I know, like I said, a lot of people just sit down in front of a computer and they've, they've never been uh, you know, instructed and taught how, how these things work down at their basic core. So uh, hopefully that's been helpful to you. And um, in the next video, we're going to go over some things about memory. If you're interested in my support services or consulting services, please visit my website at www.troyyoung.com for most current pricing information. Additionally, you can go to patreon.com slash troyyoung to help support my channel. Hopefully my video has been helpful to you. If it has been, please subscribe to my channel and by all means, please share my videos.